Well, good morning to you and welcome to our online Sunday morning service here at K Street Baptist Church. My name is Johnny. I'm one of the ministers here at K Street. And if you're new here, if you're just checking in or even if you're a regular, then let us know that we're not alone today by saying hi in the comments section below. This morning, we're going to be led in songs and scriptures as we praise God today. We're going to be telling you too about Alpha. And Alpha is an exciting opportunity to ask and explore the big questions about life and faith. If you've never been on an Alpha course before, then this is the perfect opportunity to join us for our online course starting Thursday the 2nd of July. If you want to know any more about that or express your interest in joining the course, you can email us hello at kstreet.co.uk and watch out this morning for the adverts that are coming up. We've also uh, got Jess bringing us our family time this morning with loads of help from dancers today. I'm really excited that we're going to hear too from Catherine Dunworth this morning, fresh back from Mercy Ships Africa, as well as a message from the Ovendons, a family we support through BMS World Mission. So please join us in prayer as we remember our international mission friends and partners today. Our reading this morning, it comes from uh, Romans 1 and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So if you've got your Bibles uh, to hand, then have them ready uh, as Matt brings us God's word uh, and his message today here on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. And finally, to tell you this morning, following Matt's message on Facebook Live, we're going to be sharing communion together. So if you haven't already, then please prepare a cup and some bread as we celebrate with thanksgiving in our hearts, the Lord's Supper. So let's begin this time together now with a prayer. Heavenly Father, on this Father's Day, we thank you that you are a good, good Father. Come and speak to us this morning, we pray, as we worship you. Help us to know more of your presence in our lives, even as we live apart right now. Would you bless us, Lord, as we seek to be a blessing to you and others this day. And may we see your kingdom come here on earth as in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God and it is he who made us. And we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. On this Father's Day, why don't we praise our Father God together, the Father who has chosen us, who loves us, and who sucks us free. Child of God, yes I am. 
Welcome to Alpha. Can anyone remember and tell me what the word was last week that I had, um, I had jumbled up, the jumbled up letters, what was the word, what did the word spell? Anybody? It was, thank you, well done, anybody who remembered. Um, and we're carrying on thinking about that today, about thankfulness today. So what I want you to do is go over to your windows, I want you to look out, 
and I want you to see if you can see any trees, okay? How many trees can you see? What kinds of trees can you see? Do you know what they're called? Okay, and now I want you to see if you can spot any flowers out of your window. Can you see any flowers? And what colours are the flowers? Are they lots of beautiful colours? Are they nice and bright? <laughs> and what about what about any animals outside? Can you see any animals? Can you see any birds? And do you know the names of any birds? <laughs> well done, everybody. We live in a really, really beautiful world, don't we? And sometimes we forget to stop and have a look at it. And it's really good for us to stop and have a look at it and say thank you to Father God for this beautiful, this beautiful creation that he's given us to look after. And um, we're going to read now um, A Thought to Make Your Heart Sing, Another Thought to Make Your Heart Sing by Sally Lloyd-Jones, um, read with the um, permission of HarperCollins Christian Publishing. This one is called But We Miss Our Onions. It's a funny title, isn't it? God's people were slaves in Egypt, so God rescued them. God had divided the sea. He'd moved a cloud. He'd sent a pillar of fire. He'd given them water from a rock and rained down bread from heaven. And still, his people didn't trust him. God hates us, they said. God had saved their lives, and they said, but we miss our onions. Sometimes we're like those ungrateful people grumbling in their tents about onions. That's what sin is, not seeing that every single thing we have is a gift from God. It's why God tells us to be always thanking him. Why does he need us to thank him? Well, he doesn't, but we do. You see, God knows it will fill our hearts with joy. Let's um, let's pray now before we have our worship time. Let's um, put our hands together and close our eyes. Father God, thank you for this beautiful world, for all that and for all that you give us. Lord, give us the wisdom to look after it well, and the kindness to share it well. And Lord, give us thankful hearts so that we can know your joy deep down inside them. Amen. And now we're going to sing a worship song and it's called The Joy of the Lord is My Strength. And we've got some brilliant dancers dancing joyfully and I want you to join in with some joyful dancing at home. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds now to go and get an instrument or in fact what I should have said last week it doesn't have to be an instrument it can be anything noisy it can be a pan and a spoon anything to join in with it doesn't matter what it is so your countdown is going to start now <laughs> Okay, so what did you get? Excellent work. I've got this drum. That's a good noise, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing that drum. Okay, then are we all feeling ready to worship? Yeah, ready, let's go! Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. Though the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I cannot feel 
presence now I come alive, I am alive with you There is strength when I say I will praise you, Lord Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength The joy of the Lord is my strength In the darkness I'll die Catherine, it's great to see you. How, how are you feeling? Hello, Ian. Um, it's really lovely to be back. I'm feeling well. I'm on day eight of quarantine currently, and yeah, feeling really good. It's lovely to be back. It's very different to how I thought it would be coming back, but it's really nice. Yeah, the country is quite different, I think, from, from when you when you left it. Not necessarily for yeah, the better. Just a little bit. There we go. Have you managed to see your mum and dad yet? And um, yeah, I saw them. They brought up um, all my um, food and supplies that I'll need for 14 days while I'm here. Managed to see them at a socially acceptable distance when they dropped it off through a glass door. So yeah, lovely. So how long have we got you in, in, in Rossendale? And um, so the initial plan before uh, the pandemic was that I'd be here till the end of July. Um, but um, the new plan is that I'll probably be here till the, about the end of August, beginning of September. So about four weeks extra. So then what then what will you be doing? Is it still the same plans as before or what will be happening, as far as you know? Um, and so I'll still be teaching, yeah, on board the ship. So that will still be happening. And um, in terms of mercy ships, they're still just keeping an eye on what's happening in West Africa, how the virus is developing um, to to plan for, for what will happen um, come that time. Which country were you going to go to this second, the second year? You weren't going back to Senegal, were you? Uh, no, the plan was that um, we'd be going to Liberia um, mm. this year. Um, but like I say, they're just having to keep an eye on what's happening in West Africa at the moment. Good. So now with the COVID, did, is it right that before you sort of came back, that you did lose some of your medical staff? because of helping out in other countries um, with, the, with the pandemic? Yeah, so we had people um, did leave. So towards the middle of March, um, we had to close operations um, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health in Senegal. We felt that that was the best way forward. Um, and so at that point, we had kind of two weeks to close down the hospital and 
discharge patients. And at that point, uh, people from all departments on the ship did go home, some of which were medical to go and help at home, yeah. Um, is it, were there some sort of potential patients who had you'd agreed, or not you, but the, uh, the medical staff had agreed to treat, who couldn't be treated, who'll be left and not get the treatment at all? Um, there were there were some patients, yeah, that we had two and a half months left there. So there were some patients, um, and at the moment, hopefully, we'll be able to go back at some point. But we just, with the pandemic, we just don't know at the moment. I, am I right too that the doctors, some of your doctors, would be training some people in Senegal there, any doctors are to help helping them to treat other patients over there, or is that my imagination? Um, so we have a medical capacity building program that um, is on, on mercy ships where they train doctors and nurses and they train dentists um, alongside the, the surgeons um, who are working at the time. They come on board and they learn from that. And there's also different courses about safe surgeries um, and the poinsettia clinic with the, with the right of the club foot. And um, we have uh, people that come and learn from us while we're there. Uh, which is amazing because it builds capacity in the countries that we go to and therefore when we leave there are people that are in their own countries that can help um, after we're gone. Brilliant. So but what first of all what was it like on board ship? It sounds very glamorous but you'd be sharing a cabin with a few people and not able to get about. What, what was it really like Catherine? I mean so glamorous Ian. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> shared a cabin with, with four people. Yeah. So there was four of us in one cabin. Um, I was on a top bunk on a, on a bunk bed, so I was about um, two feet off the ceiling um, in my bunk bed. So you got very used to getting in and out without bumping your head. Um, <laughs> but it was good. I got to know people really well. Um, I, I lived with a girl from New Zealand and two girls from Cameroon, so it was it was very varied who you lived with. Um, we had our two minute showers and it was literally in and out. You got very good uh, at washing your hair and everything in just two minutes. Um, so, but it was really good. I think living in community on board the ship is probably one of the highlights of being there. Mm -hmm. Just getting to know all the people from around the world um, and people from around the world that are all there for the same reason, because mm -hmm. they feel like God's called them to serve the people of West Africa. And that's a real privilege to be a part of. And the children, tell us about your classroom if, for a minute, if you can. Yeah, so my, um, my classroom is small but perfectly formed. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's on deck seven of the ship on the um, port side. Um, and it's, it's a lovely little room. Six seems like a small number, but you couldn't fit any more children into that classroom. Six is the absolute max you could get in there. Um, but the, the children were, were lovely. They were from all around the world, from the Netherlands, Brazil, um, America, France. It was, and so you got to really uh, see different cultures and different, um, yeah, different ways of doing things that the children had. And that was just really lovely because we got to celebrate different times of the year with different children and celebrate their culture as well. Um, what, yeah, were the age, it was, it, what was the age range of them, sorry? You. So I taught grade one, um, which were uh, six and seven year olds. So it would be what we would call year two at right. school. Yeah. So, sorry, I interrupted you. Tell us about a life on ship otherwise, though. Was, you made good friends, I'm sure, apart from the, the girls you're sharing with? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I made some uh, lovely friends while I was on board. Um, and it started with my onboarding group. So this time last year, I was, I was in Texas. Uh, doing all my training there and a lot of those friendships very much have continued throughout because they were there through that whole transition when we left home and when we did everything and so there was some lovely friends again from from all over the world um, and yeah it's a real privilege and it was a little bit sad leaving them last week but I'll see them again so yeah. How many of them will you see again? Um, I think of the teaching team, there's about half of us returning and half of the people have gone home. That was planned. Um, some of them have been there three or four years already. And so they were planning to leave at the end of this academic school year anyway. Um, and for some people from my onboarding group were signed up just for the year. They would signed up for a year and so they will go back home. But there's a lot of us that are planning to be back for next year because we signed up for the two years. Good. So tell us about some of the highlights. You must have seen God 
at work amazingly. Just just thrill us through some of your highlights. Yeah, so um, like I said, one of the highlights is just um, the privilege of community that we've been in. Just the, the people from all over the world that I've got to, to share with and just hearing their calling and how God has called them to the ship. No, no story was the same. And that was an absolute privilege to be able to get to, to, get to hear that. Um, but not just that, um, you could never forget that you were on a medical hospital ship. Even, even the days teaching um, in the afternoon, the patients from the hospital would come up onto deck seven um, where my classroom was. They would get their fresh air out there. We could take our children out to play with the patients. And, and that was an opportunity for us to see them. And that was amazing because you saw patients that came in um, before the surgery and then you got to see them during the recovery and you got to see, um, to see the end and, and what has been done for them. And that was, that was really good. Um, one of my absolute highlights was the Hope Centre. Um, and so the Hope Centre was about a 10 minute drive away from the ship. Um, and it was a building where the patients who lived outside of Dakar and who couldn't travel in every day for their post-op and pre-op things would stay at the Hope Centre. Um, and it's such an apt name. The, the amount of hope that was in that centre was just amazing. You saw children there that would play together and the family were all getting along. And the, I would go there on a Sunday. I would help teach the Sunday school there. Which interesting, I didn't speak any Wolof or any <laughs> any French even, really. Um, but that didn't matter. Um, we had translators, some of the day crew translated for us, we sang with them, we told Bible stories, and, and it was just a great time to get to know those children. And some of the highlights for me were the, the ortho kids um, who came in with the bowed legs, the windswept legs, and they came in at the start at the Hope Centre and they were so low to the ground because they were walking because their legs were so bowed. And then you saw them go through the process. They went to the ship. You saw them on the ship. You saw them come back to the Hope Centre with the casts on. Um, and at first they couldn't walk at all on the casts. And then you started to see them with the frames and they'd start to walk. And then eventually had the casts off and you saw them doing their physio on the dock. Um, and then you saw them being able to run and play and jump and just to see that transformation throughout that time was just, yeah, it was just an amazing process and it was a real privilege and being able to do the Sunday school every week with them was just, yeah, it was brilliant. Wow. And to see. Absolutely amazing. Well, uh, can you just tell us one or two things perhaps that we can remember to pray for, for you now, for the future, for your, for your um, return, whatever. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think just um, praying for me now. Obviously, I've got a um, few days left of quarantine. When this goes out on Sunday, I leave leave on Tuesday. All being well, quarantine will be over on Tuesday. Um, so you can pray for that. And just, just pray for the time here that it will be a time that I'd be able to, to rest, but also be able to to meet up with people and catch up with people. I don't know how that's going to look. It's going to look very different whether that be socially distanced in a garden or a park, I don't know. So just pray that I will be able to, to meet up with people, with friends and family as well. Um, and just will that I'll be able, able to share. Will you be able to join your mum and dad in their household? You won't have to socially distance from them, will you? No. So once the 14 days is yeah. over, I'm going, yeah. going back to live with mum and dad. Once we yeah. know the quarantine is over, yeah, I'll be, I'll be part of their household. So that's good. Oh, Catherine, thank you so much. We've been thrilling chatting to you again, and hopefully we'll be chatting to you in the flesh before very long. So thank you very much. And bless you. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Bye. Bye. God's good news. We share it by the way we are, by how we relate to people, and by what we do and say. At K Street, we also share good news by supporting a number of people who've answered God's call to make disciples of all nations. Amongst those people and organisations is our own Baptist World Mission, with Joe and Lois Ovenden working in Uganda. At the beginning of June, they would have been with us. They would have been part of our family service. They would have met up with their parents, extended family and home churches. Their children would have met up with their grandparents. But you know what happened? The coronavirus pandemic. 
If the virus has made life harder for us, what about the rest of the world? Mission organisations already working in some of the most challenging places around the world have had yet more challenges to face as they provide aid, education and support in the name of Jesus. Here now are Joe, Lois and others telling about the work they and BMS are doing and how we can support them at this time. A global pandemic is gripping the world and the news we see isn't telling the whole story. Thankfully, right now, in some of the most marginalized and fragile places that BMS World Mission works, COVID-19 appears to be contained, and we pray that that will last. But even now, nationwide lockdowns are having a devastating effect. The um, impact of the, of, the, of the lockdown has been pretty, pretty severe, particularly for uh, the economy. Uh, most people here live uh, hand to mouth, day by day. Um, the money that they earn from their business activities is what they spend on feeding their family. Um, so um, shutting down the economy basically overnight has um, put you know many people at risk of um, of hunger and starvation. If coronavirus spreads uh, further, um, and yeah, uh, there are far more cases than there are, there are right now, that has got the potential to be absolutely catastrophic to this country. Um, I'm not sure if there are any ventilators in the country. If there are, there are very few. Um, and so the ability for the hospitals here to care for the sickest patients is going to be um, severely limited. Um, yeah, so that is, that is a concern as the numbers start slowly increasing. We are praying for a miracle of protection for this land and these beautiful people, as the country is not in any way able to cope with a pandemic. If or when the virus takes hold here and spreads, the hospitals will be overrun and there are few facilities to isolate and support the chronically sick. What has been lovely has been how the community here has come together to support each other. Um, and you are part of that, as always, supporting us from afar with your, with your prayers and um, the financial support that you give to BMS. As always in these, any crisis situation, we're just so proud of what BMS is doing. It's taking a really key role um, in the Christian global response, um, not just BMS, but as part of a wider push. So one of the things that they are doing is helping to find the PPE that people need, providing food, providing mental health support, um, really seeing on the bigger scale where things are needed and not just reactionary but in anticipation of knowing that the virus affects different countries um, in different ways. Um, and so if you would love to uh, be part of that response, then BMS has a special fund. A global pandemic requires a global response. You can make a difference. Please pray, please give, and please visit bmsworldmission.org slash coronavirus to help now. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the safe arrival of Catherine back from the Africa Mercy Ship. We pray for those we support who are still abroad, for Claire in Mozambique, working on how to deliver training after this latest crisis. For George in South Korea, praying that his friend Sung Yu will become a Christian. For the Ovendons in Uganda, giving food, relief, seeds to farmers and telling Bible stories on the radio. Father God, please keep them safe, keep them true to you and may their work bring honour to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray for your missionaries who are around the world 
who are trying to use Zoom, Google Meet and other technologies to communicate your word to the people that they are serving. Lord, we pray for WEC and their missionaries. And Lord, we pray for WEC camps as they at this time are trying to put camp behind the computer. Lord, we pray for them to have creativity and professionalism. Lord, we pray for young people to sign up and we pray for them to be able to get engaged. We pray for them to learn about missionaries around the world and we pray for them to know the gospel of truth. Amen. Dear Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the world in this present crisis. We pray, whether they acknowledge you or not, that you will give them extra wisdom and compassion and take good advice as each country faces a crisis of this pandemic. We particularly pray for those countries where the leaders do not seem to take the virus seriously, where life seems almost to continue as normal despite the risks. And so we bring to you in particular the countries of Brazil and India and parts of the USA with their vast populations. We pray for people who are suffering. We pray for generous provision in healthcare and food. We pray for all who have been made redundant in this crisis. We thank you for our government and for the provisions they have made at great cost to help people to survive. We know that in many countries they have not had these privileges and benefits. We ask, Lord, that you will have mercy on us all, that this deadly virus will be defeated and that the whole world can recover from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we pray for world leaders. We pray for them to think about everybody in their country, from children, women, poor, the lost. Lord, may they think about everybody and how they are affected by this pandemic. Lord, we pray for world leaders to be able to work together. Lord, we pray for peace. Even in this pandemic, wars are still happening. Natural disasters are still happening. And Lord, we pray that actually world leaders will work together, that friendships would form. And Lord, we pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
Romans chapter 1 verse 14 to 17 For I have an obligation to all peoples, to the civilised and to the savage, to the educated and to the ignorant. So then I am eager to preach the good news to you also who live in Rome. I have complete confidence in the gospel. It is God's power to save all who believe, first the Jews and also the Gentiles. For the gospel reveals how God puts people right with himself. It is through faith from beginning to end. As the scripture says, the person who is put right with God through faith shall live. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 For the message about Christ's death on the cross is nonsense to those who are being lost, but for us who are being saved it is God's power.